Hello, and welcome to my channel. This is Adrian, and that is Grace, waving hello. And she was in a mighty hyper mood today, as you can see. Ugh, that child. But anyway, she says hello. Today, I am doing a second review on the Mag Magic Fly watercolor markers. And as you can see, I've taken them out of their original container and just put them in a... Um, coffee can which I can then store on the sides because these markers do best if they're stored on the sides and um, again the magic fly comes with two tips one is a brush tip which you can see there I'm gonna get a piece of paper and see if I can get that a little bit better for you there you go so you got a brush tip and that's a, that's a nice brush tip I have no complaints about it and then you have the fine tip and it's not a ballpoint but it is a, a fine tip and it's really really nice which you'll see in a second and for my watercolor paper I'm going to be working with the Stratmore watercolor and then I am going to be using my water filled brush both of the brush and the watercolor paper I got off of Amazon very inexpensively the brush was actually a six pack and then just to play around I have one of my stamps out I'm not making a card or a project but it was one of the things that I was interested in doing when I bought these stamps so I thought we'd do it now right here I have my 110 pound cardstock that I use for my face covers it's not the ultra thick but it is 110 pound and then the Strathmore and one of the things that really you know pointed itself out to me is that the watercolor paper is not a true white so um, buying it I didn't like I'm still learning so much so there's different degrees of whiteness and the cardstock is whiter than the watercolor paper so here I'm writing with the brush tip and as you can do thinner lines or thicker lines with it and then underneath um, that I'm writing the magic fly with the um, fine tip and it just writes beautifully I could see myself using that a lot for writing sentiments or doing fine lines outlining stuff um, so far I've just really been very pleased with that and then off to the side here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an orange marker. I really thought I'm going to use nice bright colors and it will show up really well. But unfortunately, my lighting is a window and occasionally a lamp. And I just do not have the proper lighting to make this any brighter. And for that, I apologize. But as you can see, I'm just adding water to it, trying to get that orange to move around or do something watercolory and it's um it doesn't it is a great marker to color with but if you're using it on a cardstock you're not going to get it to move like um you can on watercolor paper which you'll see in a few minutes so um i don't know if you can tell but the paper where i had gotten it trying to move that orange around it was really kind of rough that the fibers were separating now this is the moment that I was like huh <laughs> I was not expecting the red to move but when I thought about it for a minute it made sense because most red inks do act differently I do not know what it is about red inks but even my stamping inks the red inks just act differently but even with the movement that you got it still isn't something that I find usable unless that's the look you're going for is just like a hue behind something then then you've got that where these markers shine as far as what they can do is when you put them on watercolor paper and when I bought them this was why I was interested in them I was trying to find an affordable thing a marker that would do what I was seeing the zig creating brush markers do but I could no way afford that so I found these I think it's a hundred and I got it for just over thirty dollars now off to the side you see that I put a little swatch of the orange and I'm just adding water to it and it just blends out so beautifully and you just get that softer look so if if you wanted to 
lighten the color or spread it out or soften it up that's how you do it a lot of times when I'm coloring figures I'll just put a little bit of water um, I'm sorry a little bit of the marker and then I'll pull the color out with the water kind of like what you're seeing with this X that I drew and um, I wanted to make sure I got all the orange off from the orange swatch so I cleaned it off and then went to the other side and it had a chance to dry so but you can still see where the orange is kind of coming off a little bit you'll see it a little bit better off the top there so this is what I was referring to when I was talking about how they could make great snow banks and um, lighter things so very pleased with that okay so there we go I'm sorry <laughs> I had to step away a second so I'll go back to the um, magnet magic fly that I had written once it had a chance to dry and you can get a little bit of movement but not a whole bunch of movement out of it at that point so um, you do have to work a little bit quickly now what I'm doing is I'm trying to get the paper wet and um, I probably could have gotten a little bit more wet than I did because one of the things that you can do with this is if you're working on wet paper you can kind of scribble some of the marker down and it works with the water it starts to feather out and it gives a very beautiful softness to it and then you're left with like no lines or blocked or anything like that so now it's one of my favorite things to do with these markers and that is blending them so I'm going to set two um, examples up um, side by side one of them I'm going to leave a little bit of a space between and one I am not to show you the two different ways that this work now everybody knows from primary school that yellow and blue makes green and I like that you can mix the the markers together to kind of create new colors and as you can see it goes right back to the blue it doesn't ruin the marker and then even if you leave just a little bit of space between them you can kind of pick up a little bit of the blue a little bit of the yellow and you can kind of create the shades of green or whatever color you're working with on the side and I do always have something that I can wash my pen off of and then you know you can continue working with it they hadn't had a chance to dry so I was able to just keep working with it and um, I have to say this is a really fun thing now if you want the colors to be a little bit darker and vibrant you're gonna mix them with each other if you're going for a softer look you'll kinda have a little bit of separation to kinda get that ombre look but once they're wet you can work with them for a little while and just continue to pick up color which is a lot of fun so next uh, I'm trying to remember the stamp okay I've seen this technique done on so many cards where the stamp is big and it could be very colorful but all the elements are together like the grass the bunnies the butterfly they're all on one thing so using these markers instead of ink to stamp with is one of the things that I was interested in so what you're going to see and this is very messy I am not taking my time I am not trying to make it look the best I'm just trying to show what I would use these markers for and one of them is on stamps so I'm just coloring in the grass area green um, originally I had tried to do gray bunnies but you couldn't see it at all in the light so we're gonna have orange bunnies because <laughs> again it's just for the demonstration so just kind of running the marker over it now I'm, I'm very careful to use the side of the marker not the tip because I don't want to mess up the tip with the roughness of the stamp and I want to spread the ink as evenly as possible so I'm just very carefully going over the edges or with the side of it along the stamp and then the butterflies I'm going to do the blue and again you can kind of see I'm using this side of my stamp now the next thing you have to do is huff on the stamp and I don't know if I just didn't put enough ink on or if I just didn't huff enough or whatever but on the watercolor paper you have to remember watercolor paper is not smooth paper at least not the watercolor paper I got 
So I left it there for a little bit to try to get it to transfer over, and it does, but it's not as crisp as um, the image on the front of the stamp. However, that is still very usable. <laughs> Forgive my Cricut table. Um, I'm off scene, but what you're seeing is I'm just coloring the stamp again. I'm not even messing with the watercolor paper. I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. But I'm using the markers to re-ink everything up and color it and get it ready for it. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to stamp it on the cardstock, which is smooth. And doing the same thing of just giving it a chance to sit there for a second and and um, soak into the paper which is really important and I think this time I huffed on it a couple of times because this is a really big stamp so I huffed on it a couple of times and then I after I huffed on it a couple of times and tried to re-moisten it I applied it to the white cardstock and uh, I'm joking around that I'm just like now <laughs> you just pressed it down firmly normally I would have a stamping mat underneath me if I was stamping which I didn't have and not having these tools does make a difference but you can see the difference that with the smoother paper more of it transferred over now this isn't a problem you can just take a water filled brush and you can go back in and you can pull color from the edges and that's again one of the things that I wanted to do and it fills it in I believe you know it fills it in you can start to see the definitions of the bunnies you can um, fix areas and so had this been a project that I was really applying time and effort and it would have probably turned out better but this is just to showcase what these markers can do and this is one of the things that these markers can do and it's one of the reasons why I wanted them ironically it has not been something I've tried before now so I went back to the um, cardstock and as you can see I was able to get a little bit of ink movement um, I have to remember to clean my brush enough to kind of create a hue so it doesn't drag the color into the paper like the watercolor does but it does kind of spread it out and give it a little bit of a hue um, I, I was pleased with it I really was and like I said if I had had my stamping mat out I probably would have gotten a better image so here I haven't cleaned off my stamp it still has the markings on it from when I stamped on the white cardstock so what I'm going to do now is just use um, a misting a water mister and I'm just going to spray the stamp a little bit and then I'm going to reapply it to the watercolor paper just to see what it will do I kind of have a theory that I thought it would kind of make it look like a watercolor painted thing and I just wanted to see what it does and I was really quite pleased that it did that much to be honest because you think about how long the marker had sat on the stamp and how dry it had and just misting it with water and applying it to the watercolor paper and it still it still transferred enough of the image over that it did something so there you go that's if you wanted to use it with the stamp um, and, uh, I decided that I really wasn't happy with the way that the orange marker demonstrated the fine lines so I went in with the green marker just to maybe hopefully make it to where you could see it a little bit better so I'm just making grass <laughs> uh, I'm not the best artist but there you go and then you see how you can just pull the color I was able to just basically go over those little ones but I'm able to soften up those hard lines to make it look like blades of grass or leaves or whatever. You can make it as soft or as rigid of a line that you want to. But I just felt like that just gave a better example. 
And because I had spent so much time using it as a watercolor medium and not as a marker, I wanted to just very quickly draw with it as a marker on the cardstock paper and just so you can see it as a marker. It's, it does wonderful just as a marker. I created a little sunshine, drew it with the fine tip, colored it in with the brush tip, and it's it's absolutely fine. So you could use this in your coloring books. You don't have to use it as a watercolor medium. So my final thoughts on this is I think I got a good bang for my buck. My favorite part is I'm going to just do the blending again because it is my favorite thing to do. Don't ask me why. But I just love creating the different hues and, and that um, variegated look. Um, I can't think of the word of it, but ombre. I just, I just enjoy doing that with inks, so it doesn't surprise me that I enjoyed it with this. But the bottom line is, is I am very pleased with these markers. Um, I'm sure there's many people out there who, who will be able to say that the higher dollar markers are worth every penny because what they do. And I am not going to dispel that because I have not used any higher dollar markers. But I think that for the $30 that I spent on 100 markers, they're not refillable. I can't give you the name of any markers because it's not marked. I found it to be worth the investment for me. And I hope that this helps you as you make your choices. Have a blessed day. Bye.